The polka dot bandit and accomplice are headed down Park Boulevard. Well, we sure left those flat foots flat footed. All units apprehend they are driving a pickup truck. Just like those nights back on the old plantation. Sitting there on the porch, the smell of honeysuckle, with the sound of the crickets cricking and the katie diz didn't. <laughs> Peace and serenity. I tell you. La, 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 la. <laughs> Eddie Bell, what was that? Sounds like the garbage disposal is backing up again. That's the sister Sue. She's going out this evening, and she's getting dressed. Going out again? What is that gal up to? This is the third night this week. <laughs> I'll make it a distinct practice never to prime the Sister Sue's business. Well, ta-ta all. And don't wait up. Yeah, ta-ta to you, too. Good night, sister dear. Enjoy yourself. Did you see that glint in her eye? Why, she looked like sitting bull just before he gave Custer that Indian scalp treatment. <laughs> I tell you, there's no good in that gal going out three nights in a row. Montgomery, maybe you're right. Suppose Sister Sue was run over. Suppose she got hurt. Or suppose she met with violence. We've got to do something about it, Montgomery. Maggie Bell, you were right. First thing in the morning, I'm going down and take out an accident policy on that old gal. <laughs> well, Colonel, it appears to me you have a problem. Your sister-in-law has been out four nights in a row. Yeah, Calvin, my friend. She didn't get in till 3 o'clock this morning. Why, she's become a real nocturnal nanny goat. You don't suppose that Sister Sue has gone and got herself a boyfriend, do you? At her age? <laughs> don't be silly, Calvin. That would be like an old rusty bed spring in the flop house going boing. <laughs> I see you reading the paper there, Calvin. What's new, son? Well, I see that bandit struck again. Uh, what bandit is that? Well, you know, Colonel, that woman who's been breaking into jewelry stores at night. The one they called the Polka Dot Bandit. The uh, Polka Dot Bandit? A woman? Yeah, they call her that because a couple of times they've seen her, she's been wearing a polka dot dress. <laughs> My sister Sue's been wearing a polka dot dress lately. They got a pretty good description of her here, too. Witnesses described the polka dot bandit as being beetle-browed with small, cruel eyes and a receding chin. One of the witnesses describes her as having a peculiar loping gait. This sounds more and more like Sister Sue. She's got a loping walk. 
She always walks like she's cranking her Essex. <laughs> now, Colonel, you don't think that Sister Sue could be the polka dot bandit, do you, really? I don't know what to think. I've been putting all these pieces together here, and it adds up to a pretty jaily jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> well, what plans have you got, Colonel? Well, now, look. Every Saturday morning, Sister Sue and Maggie Bell go to the beauty parlor. Now, I thought we'd hide out, watch the apartment, and as soon as they go, slip in and search the place from top to bottom and see if we can't find some evidence. You follow me, Calvin? Follow you. Colonel, if we were any closer, we'd be dead. <laughs> These cans are empty, but the memory lingers on. They should be leaving any moment now, Calvin. Quick, Calvin, here comes somebody. Ah, how did it do? Wow. <laughs> Duck quick, Calvin, here they come. You all right, Colonel? Yeah, but those throwaway bottles sure are rough on the head. <laughs> this is her room. Uh-oh. The door is locked. That proves she's dishonest. If there's anything I can't stand, it's dishonest people. Yes, Kelvin. Down in Nashville, the name Claxon was always symbolic with honor, pride, and southern nobility. <laughs> yeah, Colonel. Your papa was always a perfect gentleman. I remember when they rode him out of town on a rail. He tipped his hat to all the ladies as they went by. <laughs> Calvin, you search under the bed. I'm nervous, Colonel. I know the old rhinoceros is out. Ouch. But I don't like prowling around her cage. Uh-oh. Uh Wait a minute here. This door is locked. Uh-oh, that's a bad sign, Carl. <laughs> Look at all those fancy bracelets. Yeah, and a string of pearls and rings and expensive-looking brooches. This proves it, Calvin. Sister Sue is the polka dot bandit. Yeah, it sure looks that way, all right. She must be one of those schizophrenics. She got two complete different personalities. Don't be silly, Calvin. If that old goat had another personality, she'd have used it years ago. Yeah, yeah. He's been taking me out every night of the week. But why didn't you tell us? Because every time I had a boyfriend in the past, that no good, idiotic, bird-brained, lazy, loafing husband of yours has stepped in and ruined him. That's why. <laughs> What's he like? Where did you meet him? Well, his name is Clarence Shepard, and he's sort of old and wealthy. Oh, Sister Sue, this sounds romantic. I'm just dying to meet him. Well, last night he said he had something important to talk over with me and I... <laughs> yes, yes. So I invited him up to the apartment this afternoon for tea. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, Montgomery won't be home until evening and I'll go shopping so you love birds can be all alone. Of course, it's too bad he's not young and handsome. Listen, Maggie Bell, after you have made as many trips as I have on the romance merry-go-round, you don't wait to grab the brass ring. You grabs whatever you can. Because, honey, it may be your last time round. <laughs> This is terrible, Colonel. Your sister-in-law turning out to be the polka dot bandit. This is serious. I better go home and confront Sister Sue with the truth. And Calvin, old pal, pal of my childhood days, I want you to come with me. I don't know about this, Colonel. 
It said in the paper the polka dot bandit carries a gun. No, no, you didn't read it right, Calvin. It said she just simulates a gun. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll go with you, but I hope I don't end up with a simulated hole in my head. <laughs> Another cup of tea, Mr. Shepard. Honey, uh, sir. <laughs> no, no, Susan. Not Mr. Shepard. Clarence. Not Susan. Susie. Susie. <laughs> Clarence. Susie. Clarence. Oh. <laughs> There's something I want to speak to you about. Our marriage. Ooh, Clarence. Yes, I've been so lonely in that big house. I want you to share it with me. Oh, Clarence, when will we set the day? Well, I thought it'd be sweet if we eloped. <gasps> How romantic. That's funny. Sister Sue is usually in the kitchen here this time of day, making a mustard poultice for her back. Mm. <laughs> Looks like a nice boiled potato in the icebox here. Shh. I hear voices. Tell me about tonight, Clarence. All right, Susie, dear. Now, we want this to work like clockwork. We'll wait until it's dark, and I'll have the car out back. The coast is clear. You signal from the window. Sister Sue is talking to some guy named Clarence who was one of them out. No. <laughs> yeah, and it sounds like they're planning another job for the night. Just think, you and I together, why we'll steal a light from the moon. The sparkle from the stars. Sounds like they're planning on pulling some pretty big jobs. <laughs> oh, Clarence, dear. We'll be together always. I can just see us in the big house. <laughs> Me cooking your supper, bringing in your pipe and slippers, and sitting on your lap in front of the fire. Boy, they sure do have a wrong slant on that place. <laughs> They sure do. Uh, how do you think your family's going to take this? Well, I don't know about that brother-in-law of mine. I don't want him to interfere. Uh-oh, oh, Colonel. They're talking about you. Well, perhaps I'd better have a little talk with him. Oh, that won't be necessary, Clarence. I'll make some sort of deal with my sister, and we'll both take care of him tonight. <laughs> Heldon, I've heard enough. Let's get out of here. This is a mess. My sister-in-law is the polka dot bandit, and she's planning somehow to use my own wife to help knock me off tonight. Yeah, it sounds like she's planning on feeding you some homicidal ham hocks, all right. <laughs> hey, I really need some advice on what to do. I gotta work fast. Well, there's one consolation, Colonel. If the old gal does knock you off, she'll get the chair. <laughs> Well, that's no help, Calvin. And anyway, they could never squeeze that fat walrus into the hot seat. They'd have to give her the juice in the Mars chair. <laughs> How to do? Pardon me, that's my pizza pie. <laughs> Well, Oliver Wendell, what do you think of this situation? Here, my own sister-in-law, my sister-in-law who's been living with us for all these years, turns out to be a crook. Why, she's been stealing jewelry, holding up people, taking their money. Isn't this a disgraceful situation? Don't worry, my good friend. I have been giving this little matter a lot of thought and consternation, and I know exactly the path you ought to follow. Uh, what is that, Oliver? Raise her rent. <laughs> the colonel overheard a conversation, and it looks like Sister Sue and her boyfriend are about to commit rigor mortis on the colonel's corpus delecti. <laughs> well, in that case, the time has come to incarcerate the octogenarian. Huh? Turn the old gal in. <laughs> yeah, colonel, you better get her before she gets you. I guess you're right, boys. But I hate doing such a thing to my own sister-in-law. Well, box up the loot in that polka dot dress, Calvin, and let's go. Come on, Calvin, time's a-wasting. I'm coming. Sister, I'm so happy for you. I'm simply beside myself with joy. 
Well, just as long as that old foof Montgomery doesn't come around here and spoil things. <laughs> well, is that Montgomery anyway? Well, I called the office. He wasn't there. He and that friend of his, Calvin, are probably off loafing someplace. That Calvin's the laziest man in the world. Why, when he went into the army, he was the only man they ever had who fell asleep while they was giving him a physical. Attention, all units. The polka dot bandit has been definitely identified as a man disguised as a woman. The bandit put on a polka dot dress to commit the crimes. Be on the lookout for a man carrying a polka dot dress. Well, I got the polka dot dress and the jewelry in this box here, Calvin. We'll go in and turn the old gal in. It's the only honorable thing to do. Oh, the shame. The shame of it all. Well, I don't know about going in the police station here. There is a one-way door if ever I saw one. <laughs> this is Sergeant Thomas at the 27th Precinct. We just got a hot tip on a polka dot bandit. Yeah. Uh, two fellas just walked into the station. One of them is carrying a box. Yeah, looks like a lost and found case. I'll call you back. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. Servant of the people? Yeah, we got something important to tell you. Well, what is it? Well, you see, it's this way. Uh... <laughs> what was that? Just one of the main cell doors in back, closing. Well, uh, what I wanted was, uh... You say you got cells back there? Certainly. This is a police station, isn't it? Would you excuse me a minute, officer, while I go over in the corner here and have a little conflag with my friend here? I just can't do it, Calvin. That iron door slamming is draining the courage right out of me. Yeah, it gives you the cold shivers, doesn't it? Right now, it feels like an Eskimo chiropractor is giving me a massage. But you have to do something, Colonel. Sister Sue's planning on Mickey Finn and you in the Never Never Land tonight. You are right, Calvin. It's my duty. You again? Uh, yeah, sir. I want to... I want to... You want to what? Uh-oh, Calvin. There goes that Eskimo again. He wants to tell you about the polka dot bandit. Well, I think we know all we need to know about the polka dot bandit. You know who she is? Uh, she? The polka dot bandit's a man. Oh, no, she's not. She just walks that way. What are you talking about? The polka dot bandit is a man disguised as a woman. Now, if we can pick up a guy carrying a polka dot dress in some of the loot, we got our man. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, excuse me, my good man. Uh, yeah? Uh, please forget the whole thing. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, what thing is that? The thing he was going to confess to you, dummy. I mean, uh, sergeant, <laughs> sir. Yeah, what's that? Hey, what's going on here? Confess what? What do you got in that box there? Uh, bu 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 what box, sir? That box you're holding. Oh, you mean this empty box here? Uh, the one that doesn't have anything in it. Well, well, look what we have here. So you're the polka dot bandit, eh? <laughs> and you came here to give yourselves up and chicken out. Oh, no, no, sir. Then explain that polka dot dress and all that jewelry. Well, you see, uh, what happened was, the, the thing is, that is, we were only, we didn't, uh, I told, uh, uh, <laughs> well, we sure left those flat foots flat footed. <laughs> The polka dot bandit and accomplice are headed down Park Boulevard. All units apprehend. They are driving a pickup truck.
hook in this garage and throw him off the trail. Welcome home, boys. Oh, how to do? Why, Calvin, I think this is perfectly dreadful. You and the Colonel locked up like that. How in the world did you ever get out? Oh, they questioned me for a while, but they said I was too stupid to do anything crooked, and they let me go. <laughs> Wasn't that sweet of them? What about the Colonel? Oh, he's still sitting in the Iron Motel. They think he's the polka dot bandit. How do Mackie Bell and her sister feel about the whole thing? Oh, they're so mad at the Colonel, they'll never speak to him again. I think if they meet him in the hereafter, they're going to snub him. What about Sister Sue's fiancé? Well, as soon as he found out that the Colonel was in jail, he broke the engagement. He said he didn't want to have any part of a family like that. Well, that's a shame. Well, I was up there to give them my condolences and report on the colonel. Before they threw me down the stairs, I got the impression that Sister Sue had resigned herself to a life without romance. What gave you that idea, Calvin? Well, while I was there, she sent her hot water bottle down to the filling station to be re <laughs> Gloria, honey, you... My ashtray is full. Will you empty it for me, please? <laughs> if I had the wings of an angel, for the ill prison walls I would fly. <laughs> oh, me. I've been in here 24 hours. What a disgrace. Maggie Bell won't speak to me. Sister Sue has broken up with Mr. Shepard. And the police think I am the polka dot bandit. Oh, me. All right, Claxon, we're letting you out. Let's go. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. You're innocent. Now hurry up and get out of here. We just caught the real polka dot bandit, and we need this cell. So you got the real polka dot bandit, huh? Yep. Caught him in the act. Here he comes now. Why, that's Mr. Shepard, Sister Sue's ex-fiancé. That's right. And your wife and her sister Sue are outside waiting for you. And the sister says she wants to give you a great big kiss for saving her from marrying that crook. She said that? <laughs> Close the door, officer. Your deal, Mr. Shepard. 